Hello everybody! My name is Mathis and welcome back to Danganronpa. Hope you strapped in for a long episode. We're about to go to the class trial and figure out if it truly is Mondo who committed the murder. Uh, again, if you follow me on Twitter, I, I did some more speculation as to what I thought maybe happened. Uh, but I'm gonna leave that for now. I'm not gonna really talk about it too much because there's not a lot of evidence that supports it. Um, outside of the fact that Toko maybe played with the body after the murder was committed. Uh, if Mondo killed her, or him, Chihiro, and put him into the girl's uh, workout room, and then Toko went in there, saw blood, and then became Genocide Jack and, and played with the body after, that might explain why there was evidence of it being Genocide Jack, but it not being Genocide Jack, outside of what I thought was Mondo going to the library to get the, the elastic cord. But, the more I thought about that, the more I realized the only person... Mondo could have went in there. It's very, very feasible that Mondo could have done it. And I actually would prefer if that was the solution, that Mondo did it. Because it's simple, it's elegant, it was a little bit twisty and turny. I didn't you know, it took me a while to figure it out. But, uh, Toko also knew about the extension cord in there because she'd been following around uh, Byakuya, who was in there all the time and reading. So she knew about the lamp and knew about the extension cord. And the extension cord could have been taken out of that library by Byakuya and never been put back and then Toka went in and took the cord and then used that to string up the body after the body was already murdered. We'll see. Let's just go. Um, if that is the actual case, if that's what happened, I will be a little disappointed. <coughs> I like the idea of Mondo having gone into the library himself and doing it and, and discovered it through the files that were there. <coughs> Either way, doesn't matter now. Ahem! So! Is everyone ready, is everyone ready to- What?! Am I blind? Or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come kidding! I'm just kidding! How can I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time! Okie dokie, I'll go ahead and drag her out here kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please! Yeah, see, he just said she's crucial to the trial, so I'm thinking that's the case. And just like that, he said, uh, and just like that, he said, a few minutes later, he reappeared dragging Toko behind him. I told him I didn't want to, but he, he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. <laughs> <coughs> terrible! You're terrible! No! Everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle onto the elevator and let's get this show on the road! I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill her. A girl like that. And the murderer. Is someone is one of us. Someone standing right here. Hey Mondo. Hey. Fucking on. Toko man. What's got her so worked up? Alright. Alright, can we just go? Let's go. We have no choice, right? We have to do this. Yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walked toward the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend, and I couldn't get a handle on my emotions, couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally, it came to a sudden stop. What do you think? I redecorated! Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hmm. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Damn. Good, good! You're rip-raring to go! Gotta say, I don't hate it! Not at all! Well. Okay then, let's get this show on the road! Thrills, chills, kills. Everyone, please find your assigned seats! <coughs> and so the curtain opened once again. And deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith, a deadly class trial. Was that really necessary? Alright, let's save it. 
Here we go. Set skills. Uh, we have a second one, which is melodious voice. Increased damage to opponent when a statement is destroyed. Effective during bullet time battle. And breathing technique. The focus gouge cover recovers more quickly. Uh, effective during the non-stop debate, the hangman's gambit, and the bullet time battle costs 4 SP. There we go. That's all we have, I think. Uh, let's make sure everything's good. Truth bullets, review evidence, and witness accounts, presidents, report cards. Alright, let's just go. Here we go. Class trial time. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Well, that was the the dumbbell. <coughs> Locker room dumbbell. Yep. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. Okay, I just want to make sure I know the buttons. The killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? We've got it. You think you have some proof that contradicts what I said? Wait, what do you mean? There must be a contradiction. What do you mean? No, oh, never mind. I'm dumb. Chihiro's fatal in it appears it was. According to the Monokuma file, what kind of blunt instrument? I bet it was an iron pipe. Oop. Nope. There we go. Now we know. Had to wait for him to say an iron pipe, apparently. Because he just pulled that out of his ass. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell? found at the scene of the crime it was covered in blood and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury and the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell as far as i'm concerned there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one you looked at her head wound you why are you confused about that you have to yeah! These people still fucking baffle me. You have to! It's a fucking investigation! <coughs> if you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Wrong. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Yeah! Let's do it. For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the right mouse button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease, so take careful aim, okay? Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise... Uh, I don't have it on gentle. I have it on medium. Alright, good luck. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean... I just want to see if I can hit it. Boom. There's plenty of proof. But I don't think it was. Might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the genocide jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. 
More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics <coughs> in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. Boob lust? That's you, my friend. Uh, no. It's actually blood lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every, every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, if I'm not mistaken, has to do with the positioning of the body. Uh, how the victim was positioned. I got it! Apparently, in every <coughs> Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Poor Leon. Oh, Leon, I miss you, boo! Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! No, he's right. What? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes. Split personalities. No. Yes, we discovered this. Another riddle. Man, why is this gonna be so complicated? It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also not be Toko. The answer is that she's just not one person, but multiple people, right? Hangman's Gambit. What? I don't understand what I'm doing on this. S. Uh. R? No. I don't remember what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm trying to put together. Sch schism? Schism? Is that what I'm trying to spell? Schism. Alright, schism is what I'm, I'm looking for. An M now at this point. Schizo? It's not schizo. Unless it is schizo. It is schizo. Schizo! Schizo. Never mind. I was I don't know why that my brain is just like no. Is it because Genocide <coughs> Jack has a split personality? <coughs> huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file too. They thought that the suspect might have what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Miss Fukawa is perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed. I got it. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... Yeah. She must have hit her head real hard, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we went through all this all before. She lost her stutter. She was acting really weird. That's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? 
Yeah, she just doesn't want to doesn't want to kill anybody. I mean, she straight up says, "I don't want him to have control." Like, it's obvious the as hell. She locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid, afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her, of killing even more people. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! I mean, why'd you tell him? Why'd you tell anyone? That is the dumbest thing you could do! You have only yourself to blame. <coughs> you came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... Yeah, but... You sh she didn't kill him! But if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promise! How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it, but, but... But your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't mean... Toko's bodily body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second... Genocide Jack! Oh, damn, your eyes! Oh! Is it me you were hoping to see? Genocide Jill! Alright, Jesus. <laughs> what the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened <laughs> is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's form. <laughs> That's it. I mean, yeah. All right. So intense. Like they say, sound and murder is mine. Sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes. Well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like the tongue is like straight up just not natural. Or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun. <laughs> All right, this is the murderous fiend genocide, Jack. This is this is this is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. Then it's not true. Of course, it's not true. How? you try to link me to that creepazoid <laughs> and another thing the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless i mean they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town true sure i'm a bloodthirsty maniac but life is pain right to live is to hurt other people 
It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a personality just being as insane as it is. This should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Well, I mean, think about it. Why would she want to lie? Eh, no, never mind. She would want to lie about it if she did. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but... But something's still bothering me. What she said. I need to get some more details about all this. Okay, here we go. Make your argument! Status of the dead body. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that. But do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? Okay. Give it up. You killed her. <clears throat> I just have to focus on remembering Chihiro's body. All right. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. So this? No. So it's the, it's the other one. Shoot. Oh, that's a full fucking heart. Okay. Sorry, but I didn't. You say that, but perhaps if you had an oh, an when you compare your past to the modus operandi, matches completely. That's what we're looking for. I think that what I wanted to say would have matched both, oddly. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How is it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular the way scissors? of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference between the murders. In the photos from the other Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and the stomach. Here you'll see a clear difference. The victim's fatal injury. Okay. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, uh. The arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? His particular voice is really quiet during these. <coughs> That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see a clear difference. 
what was used to suspend her, how she was suspended, how the body was posed. How she was suspended. I think maybe when they were suspended is different. Uh, okay. She's right, I don't think you can determine the timing simply by looking at the body. Wait, what? So it's the first one? Which was used. Isn't that what I said? I thought I said that, maybe I'm wrong. As an extension cord. Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor sharp scissors. I feel like that would fail. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? <laughs> I'm a Big Mac baby. They're all boys, and we're supposed to assume Chihiro's a girl. There's a pattern there. Just a pattern. Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly yeah, that little Yeah, because she assumed there. Chihiro was a girl. All right, pattern is they're all men. Uh. I got it. Is it because <laughs> Chihiro was a girl? Wasn't a girl, but still. In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Ken Harada, 32. Yeah, all boys. They were all... guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full-throttle boy-on-boy fangirl! And the mopey side of me just... But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged man, madam! So, since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I, I appreciate that particular line. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of a one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly curve! Lowly curve? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. Hi, Maya. Can you see her? Say hi to Ma Say hi, Maya. Yeah. I know. Hi. Daddy's trying to figure out who murdered people. You want to come over here? Da Daddy's in the middle of a case. It's very important. I know. Life's rough. Oh, you're a cutie. All right. Well, Daddy's gonna keep figuring out the murder if you just want to chill there. And <coughs> some fluke I did kill to survive. I know, Maya. Why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect. That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never. Leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use Come a on. Big, stupid heavy dumbbell? Come on. Come on, Maya. People love you. I know. It's very frustrating. Come on. No, you're just gonna be awkward? You're just gonna be awkward. That's fine. Maybe you use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world! Scissors! Why do you love your scissors so goddamn much? Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Oh shit. Oh damn! So she can kill with her scissors. She's fully equipped! That's right! So I can kill anywhere, anytime! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trust? I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> and 
Jedi has no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? For now. But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. One person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Biakia, obviously. Where is he? Here's my answer. Uh, yeah, could be. Biakia, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? I still, I don't think, I mean, it's possible. Then the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it. All right, so if Togo didn't have any influence over the crime scene, why would Byakuya do it? The adorable glasses man was behind it all? Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Byakuya, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it. Hi, Maya. Come on. The way you were acting right before we discovered body was a little strange. Come on, come cuddle. I know you want to. And you're gone. Bye. I don't know what you want to walk on me for. The locker rooms are suspicious. Very suspicious. Dean, wouldn't you agree? Huh, suspicious. Seems nobody searched locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boy's locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girl's locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay then, what's so strange about it? Go ahead, share with the rest of the class. I don't know, I, was he involved? A new element has been added to non-stops debates. Absolutely. Let's learn more. Next, we're going to add something called a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button, then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in, in your loaded truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. When is the best time to flashback? Well, you just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay, I think I understand how they want me to do that. We'll find out. was acting kind of weird before he found the body. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! I disagree. <laughs> the victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? You wish you'd taken me with you? I really don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I need to make contradiction clear. So, you said Biakia was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... How? If you are presented with the opportunity to check... That's unnatural! The victim was Chihiro, who was a... How was that contradicting that? I don't understand. Well, we'll find out. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Okay, that makes sense. So your claim that you went to the girl's locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. 
Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. What's with Byakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The differences between this case and the other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be? What, the extension cord? Library desk lamp. Oh, yeah, the extension cord. Okay. What the fuck? That was that was That's right. Then there must be some Hey Byakuya, I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Boom. Lies. You have. It was the extension cord to your damn lamp. Lamp. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because you see that rope or should I say that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yeah, it was to his lamp. You've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girl's locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. It's because he's not! Because Mondo did it! Mondo did it! What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. See, but that's him. Right? Is the killer. He wants to rush it. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean, can I really just accept what Byakuya said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something off about what he said. The scene of the crime. I got you say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How yes. disappointing. What kind of question? Why does is he that? why is he playing Even like that? Is he just trying to get it out of me? <laughs> this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girl's locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Oh, you're so smug. It makes me want to fucking fist your asshole. Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The uh, rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the scene crime scene, Byakuya, who'd been so confident up till now, made... Maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been at somewhere else. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys' locker room and the girls' locker room. 
the, well, the rug, <laughs> but I think they're more specifically looking for the posters. I got it. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob super. Yeah. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> <laughs> of course. Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster <laughs> of the super popular boy band Tornado. Lo I love Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about. Right, Sakura? Yep. You're referring the to my protein coffee, aren't you? I love it when she winks at me. Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's it looked like poop. Definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible. In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the blood-stained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the cult bother <coughs> doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? <sighs> to get into the locker rooms, yeah, she could have stolen one. Should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gotten to the boys' locker room somehow? All right, let's find out. I mean, yes, clearly. Broken E handbook. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room? I wanted to somewhere? shoot that. Ah, I got it. She must have hacked her E handbook. Oh nope, that didn't work. Blah blah blah. Relax. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really? Ah. She must have hacked. She was the ultimate programmer. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. There we go. No, it's wrong. Found it. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. <laughs> Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's But handbook? not borrowing somebody's handbook! Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yep, yep, yep. Hit the nail square on the noggin. Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked us, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts glaring. So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... 
wrong? She was a boy! It's like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. <laughs> is that it then? Jahira was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya is the one who really did it? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what Mondo, you have to say? You are, you're, you're like, you're, ugh, all the killers just act so suspicious during the trial. There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So, <laughs> why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, break from the wait, trial? Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? How would he, how did Monokuma not know it though? So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... The crime scene. The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body. You wanna check it Be again? Sure to examine the entire body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Examine her. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait! I got it's it. Probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll do it. Very well. Oh, I'll she'll do, do it. it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S Sakura. What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... A penis! What is this... Oh, damn! What is it? Not possible. It's not <coughs> She's going possible. Super Saiyan! Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This, Ooh. this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! Ah, uh, I see. So, she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Ben... It's really true? Jiro was... a guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Jihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! He was a cross-dresser? Oh, you were really on fire! I wish I had killed him! <laughs> so that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back. All right, to so the I was trial. right. Shakira was a boy. I got it. I was right. I mean, that does. I mean, it was the, all evidence pointed in that direction as it was, but still. <laughs> you waiting. Now then. Let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought had never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, 
Rocky would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! Of course it is for so you! now everything has been connected. Huh, okay. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is no. the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. Why, though? I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. Why did he make it like Genocide Jack? Is he just trying to test us and see if we could figure it out? Like, why was that the case? The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence <coughs> he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Is he, what is he, testing us? I don't understand. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Why? Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? To test us is the only thing I can think of. Right Trying to now. figure out who... The, is much more important, wouldn't you say? the only thing I can think of is the reason he did that is to figure out who is the most... Uh, dangerous person to be playing this game against. Figure out who he needs to maybe knock out of the game. Um, and... Because... If he knows who the smartest of all of us are, who the, the ones that will figure out who, if he murdered somebody, who uh, would figure it out, why not figure that out now and throughout the time and then make that person his target? So, for instance, if he decided through his test that my character was the smartest out of all the people who would be the one most likely to figure out he was the murderer when he did commit the murder, why not kill me and knock me out of the equation? I feel like that would be the reason he would go about doing those things. Now then. <laughs> it wasn't me. Who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? 
But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means... The killer is a guy. <laughs> Since the crime scene was the boy's locker room, you would need a boy's handbook to get in. Since Leo's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. <coughs> Celeste's account. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but did nobody <laughs> get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. I, I, my info is new! Shoot! Like, that's the thing, my info is new. Isn't there a single clue? Right, speed it up. Did nobody get- I'm sure someone saw the- Perhaps someone saw the victim. Yeah. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No. Wrong. Celeste saw the, the victim. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes. I did see him. Uh, really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about Makoto. this. Makoto! The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right <coughs> before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory <coughs> warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. Track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I better get going. I'm in kind of a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry, but why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. So I, I mean, I do, you? yeah! Who, who is it? Who's the killer? You, you son of a bitch! You did it! Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? Why? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket we took. This Chihiro's track jacket really holds some clue about the killer. Somehow it's really hard to believe. Well, we're about to fucking figure it out one way or another. Make your argument! 
Celeste's account. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was yes. on his way to go exercise. Correct. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I, I don't even have a tracksuit. Because exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit, personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Okay. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. Alright, let's skip up a bit. First of all, Luffy was on his way, so next week, why did he choose? What do you mean? I got it! It matched the one so the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him. Shoot that? Nope. Oh. I don't know what happened there. First of all, we know he was on his way, so next week, why did he choose this? What do you mean? This I got it! It, it matched the one that... So, what your the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? Oh, I ran out. I gotta My speed through. Is, I, I, I have a white track. I got it from the way. Did any of that really help us? No way. Not a chance. All right, what the fuck, man? Because his duffel bag was white? What do you mean? I got it. It matched the one. So the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him. There we go. Because he's the white tracksuit bag. What I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said. The white bag, and you have a white tracksuit. Then I assume he had headed off for exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? So he just outed himself like an idiot. You, you just... Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's was? Fucking Mondo. Was? Because I, I just, I'm sure you saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No. You want to defend him because you're butt buddies, which is fine. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only <coughs> Known what color the tracksuit was, is if he saw Cherry with it before he died. That's the only possibility. Yep. Are, are you talking about the hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? The tongue is unnecessary. Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony, stuffed it in the bag. Yep. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. Smart. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. Bam. Why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. The way he was acting? No. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. The thing I caught! You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. 
So did I, motherfucker! Are you a witch? She's a witch! You're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I liked Mondo, man! I, 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 I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. You don't even. It's true. My reasoning on that <coughs> is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. What? Oh, yeah. That reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then, um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to Mondo's? Chihiro's? My God! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene Because it was missing, time, okay, yeah. Right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main <coughs> hall. For all your confidence, that is a relatively <coughs> high failure rate. <laughs> I think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere. Yeah, definitely. How precisely did the handbooks get broken? How did the handbooks break? There's only one possible explanation. By hacking it. Physically hack into it? No, oh, yeah, he said no. Okay, that's fine. By hitting its weak point. You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah. You remember that? Well, what you told us! I would expect you to know that we were gonna try and remember that shit. Uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally The sauna. Break. The sauna. I flippin' knew it. You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the Toss floor it in the, the sauna. sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. 
interesting. <laughs> new fact today. Good job. <laughs> you a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew it's because he was in the sauna before. How'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean by accident? The sauna the competition. took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke. They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible. I don't know. We already know. We already know. It's so easy. Into the song. I might know someone who. Whoa. Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the. It had to be one of the war who wore all, all their clothes in the sauna. It was. Well, Mondo. Both of them did. I mean, they both, like, he did it and Mondo did it. Here's my answer. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? I know, your lovers, it hurts. It breaks my fucking heart. Mondo and Taka I ship them. I endurance contest in the <laughs> sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. Uh, no, wait, hold up. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but but I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Here we go. Make your argument. Broken e-handbook, Jahiro's handbook, card reader. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Does it? No. Does it? Then he needed Leon's handbook and broke Leon's handbook after using it. Is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? Oh, and it wasn't Leon's. Because you couldn't turn it on and figure it out. That was Mondo, so he took Leon's, swapped it, and we just made the assumption that the broken handbook was Leon's. It's not. It's Mondo's. What the heck are you talking about? <coughs> what I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's. Yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation? No, because he didn't loan it. Here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student. But if, but if they're, they're dead, dead, they're not a student. They're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? <laughs> Come on, tell him he's wrong. You are wrong. You have to be wrong. Everything you just said is wrong. You made it all up. Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time? That way, everything will become clear. Are we doing the comic book section now? Closing climax. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh. All right, we got. I know it reads backwards like a manga. I understand that. Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse with the duffel bag, and... Okay.
Boom. In. Locked in. The weapon the killer used was, okay, yep, the uh, dumbbell. Oh wait, okay, so let's go back. Not that. Oh wait, yeah, that. It's just, it's, it's not smooth feeling. I've said that before. Skies of Truth, the killer switched around the carpet as well as something else. Obviously the posters. Wait, this has got to go somewhere. Which locker room did Chihiro go into? Chihiro did not go into the girls. One of the boys. There we go, like that. There's something everyone that has you need to get into the locker room. Boom. Okay, the weapon the killer used was the... I mean... That. Which locker room did the killer move to? Girls locker room. The killer took something from the other locker room and switched it to the scene of the crime. Posters. Boom, boom. Then Byakuya messed with it. Like that. When Byakuya arrived in the scene, what did he use to disguise what happened? Wait, this you mean? This, this. Uh, where did the killer go after they were done? That is that the sauna? I can't even. I can't tell. They went to the sauna. Clearly. I think that's the sauna. I can't tell. And then the handbook got thrown in the sauna room. What happened to it? It broke. Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. Boom. Got it. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out. Even Officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room. Specifically, the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently... No, I didn't lay out my reasoning right. I need to rearrange the events of the case. Wait, what? There's something everybody has to get into the locker room. How is that not it? Which locker room did your hero go to? I don't understand. Try again. With bag in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She made her but how could the victim There we go. Apparently the other one was wrong. Simple. Which is why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. Seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, 
Approach the unsuspecting Chihiro. Cracked him on the face. And attacked it. No, I didn't lay on my... Okay, that's wrong too. How is that wrong? As the murder took place, some blood splattered onto something, didn't it? Wait, that's... How did I misread that? Okay, let's try again. I misread that hint, apparently. Bloodstains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. If he knew it was a boy though, like, I don't understand why he would move it to the girl's locker room. That's like, immediately puts suspicion on him the when they figure it out. I guess maybe try and hide it. the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall, using one of those. Okay, right, yeah. And that's exactly how the killer did. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys and girls locker room. In what you might call a crime scene switch. You might call it that, which is exactly literally what it is. Then, that for some reason, Byakuya did things. that. But no. <coughs> Byakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. And then he got to work. Use the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the Sarn. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Oh, Mondo. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? Oh, it sucks. Wait. No. This can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence? I mean, I just kind of laid it all out in front of you, buddy. You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. Evidence that Mondo is the killer. That already revealed itself earlier in the trial. If I could somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now. Once I do that, everything will become clear. A new element has been added. The bullet time battles. Uh, yes. Let's talk a little bit about fever time and nega time. During a bullet time battle, if you press the space key... Fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to its max. At this point, even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. So you could push right mouse, blah, 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 however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. But this only lasts until your focus gouge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, it would be f only fair if only you got to access special time, right? So we've also prepared something called Nega Time that your opponent can use. The opponent activates Nega Time during Bullet Time Battle. Your Temple Meter will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. 
If you were to activate Fever Time at this point, no one, no, never mind. I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what was them. Unsurprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to blah, blah, blah. Good luck, halftime. Here we go. <coughs> the moment of truth. I right, have to go against you because you love him. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. Failed? I don't understand. How'd I do that wrong? Uh oh. No. Oh no, what? Don't make me go through all that again. Uh, what? Is, is Wait, what? Yes. I, refuse to give up yet. I need obviously need to give it another shot. The fuck happened? Did I just forget how to do that fucking battle? No. How the hell do I do bullet time battles? I forget. During a bullet time battle, you take damage as you influence gauge whenever, blah, blah, blah. Tempo meter. Right click, then, okay. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. Use the vault. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. False. How? I mean. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. You're corrupt. I'm corrupt. Okay. I think I, I now remember how to do it. I refute you. All right, did we do it? Show me some evidence. This should prove it. There we go. I don't like that. I don't know why. I just don't like that aspect of, of the trials. It feels weird and out of place. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken. We've already talked room. about this. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll <coughs> gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. Okay, well, that's surprisingly easy. I wish you had just done that the first 17 times. <coughs> that I blamed you. Got an A. Beautiful. Bro! 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 I got no choice, man. <coughs> After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that. Wait, hold on. No waiting, no holding on. <laughs> Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? I like how if I fail, they all just assume I did it, even though no evidence was pointing to will me. Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Who is found guilty? Oh, Mondo. Here we go. What? This time looks like you got it right again! Yes, it is so! The black and the kill Chihiro Fujisaki was... Mondo Iwata! In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer! You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru! You need to be more careful! I refuse to believe it! There's no way! No way you would kill someone! Sorry. What, what is this? Why are you apologizing? Why, 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 why? Why? Why did you do it? Now 
then. Well, looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. <gasps> oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the control key to fast forward to the text. Nope, I want to know. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his, as his way out. Now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him. It was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Weak, 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 weak. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, the world is a survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be, the, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. What? And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right but, now. But... And we'll talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used that threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made the commitment to, be, to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be a good idea to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> yep! Sure was! <laughs> the biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep that secret. Uh huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. <coughs> Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That was his aspiration, and he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um... Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made with Chihiro. But... But how does moving the body keep his secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then, Mondo did all that to keep a promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed? Why would he do that? 
The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? <coughs> so why did you do... Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something you didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone. You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother! <laughs> oh, damn. Damn. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. <laughs> Mondo's older brother was Daya Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he Im imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang. And his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. But when Mondo started uh, to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatest... His reputation began to gnaw at Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created the gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of all the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger, stronger than Daya. Once, just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me. I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on top. And one, and wait, rather, and on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... <laughs> laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. M my bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a per- <coughs> A promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who'd bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his big brother. I... I just... I'm... strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong. And yet... <laughs> as soon as our killing game began, he realized... No matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely... And well, and then the lovely... The hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets! At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own older brother. 
no matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. He, his death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. So that's why... I... That's I... why I... Mondo. Yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swirling around. I never felt anything like it before. I... I just... I didn't, didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right he there, I... He told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me all this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... <coughs> yeah, you're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong, I can't hurt you, you right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? What? You're saying if I really what? am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was kind of strength I never had. So I was just jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. What? Are you making what? fun of me? I'm strong? Are you fucking with me right now? No! No, I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? What's wrong? Damn Why you. did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I just wanted to... Admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right, I am strong. Strong, I'm strong. Strong, 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 strong. Stronger than you! You son of a bitch! And stronger than Daya! <coughs> I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was lying at my feet covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hands and I was just staring at him down on the ground. Hey! I... I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always Damn. been. Damn. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side from er away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in the heart of his and turned into cold blood. God damn it! Look at him! You see? You're all just like him! For a secret from the past, for a memory! For that, he killed another living human in cold blood! He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world! He doesn't know what true strength is! Do you see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't! You bastard! Just shut up, you son of a bitch! Go ahead! Say that again, I dare you! Yep. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want! Is what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now, because the time for punishing is fast approaching! P punishing You kid me. You mean execution! Well, now, well, now, That's well, what well, I promised well, you, right? Now. The blacken that disturbs the peace will be punished? Ridiculous. Uh, hold on! Now then, I prepared a very special <laughs> punishment! <laughs> no, wait, wait! Let's give it everything we got! It's punishment time! <laughs> Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. That's sad! Oh, goodbye. Mondo has been found guilty. Time for the punishment.
Here we go. Oh, he just is on a motorcycle. Just, just there. <coughs> oh, Jesus. What the hell? The cage of death. Okay. So just spin around till he vomits his brains out to death? I would be puking so bad. Oh, Jesus. What happens? Is it electrocution? Well. Where is he? And he get roasted and toasted? Mondo butter. So we got liquefied? I really don't understand that death scene. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be, my brother. Another murder, another, and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. I feel so bad. Oh. That's the, oh God. As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, he had to. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game? B Byakuya? What is this? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead, do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except However. that. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So he ignored the nighttime rule too. <laughs> the rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. <laughs> I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. <laughs> What? You, you mean you actually witnessed the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well. So you're saying you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene. What? But damn, man, if we hadn't figured out who'd really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. <laughs> of course. Byakuya turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Once I was able to decide, once I, once I do decide to become black, and I now know who I'll have to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. There's something I'd like to ask you, Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next! You. You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is why? <laughs> do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you! All this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself! What? You're over-exaggerating. <coughs> I am not over-exaggerating! These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair! Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? Huh? Mean? What the heck? 
Mean, 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 mean. Good grief. I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh. Ah, the noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me? <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm going to find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. For which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! Woo, so cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something! No trash mob for you! I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> <coughs> temper, temper! Sounds like someone needs a nap! <laughs> Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom, and the, and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue, because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. <coughs> it was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Ooh. Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Who was he talking well, to? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. Who's he talking to, I wonder? Me, maybe? That's one thing I'd like to ask as you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? A 16th high school student. Oh, my, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> uh, something going on in the background, I don't know! Boy's Life of Despair, Chapter 2. The end. Down two more students. Still one more to be joined. To be continued. To be continued indeed. I got the crazy diamond present. Oh, his... His jacket. 